all right guys welcome this is a tutorial on how I record my gameplays and what programs and settings I use to do it the two programs I'll be covering is DxToy and Sony Vegas Movie Studio HD 11 before we jump into DxToy though I will show you the DxToy website I will leave a link to this in the description so you can check it out for yourselves you can get a 30-day free trial but it leaves a small watermark on the top of your videos here or you can buy it for I believe 35 to 40 US dollars the currency is converted to Japanese yen so you have to use PayPal to do that and I like DxToy simply because it has a lot of better options than Fraps does and it is a lot less stressful on a system than Fraps is so that is my reasoning to using DxToy now jumping into DX story. This is the first page that you will see and to start from the top uh, when you launch a game DX story as long as it's running should automatically detect that game and create a profile for it. I've got a couple of profiles and it detected all these automatically. For Battlefield 3 is the one that we'll be covering because I leave most of my profiles all the same. The first page is this targets page is a bunch of technical information that we won't be covering because it's not doesn't really apply you can't change anything here the overlays tab is the first one that's useful and before we jump into the overlays actual settings the first checkbox you see is use default settings leaving or checking this box will make the settings that you see below apply to all the future profiles that are created it's the benchmark or the standard settings that get applied to your profiles. You can of course go on and go on later and change these in individual profiles. The first uh, thing we'll be covering in the actual overlay settings is video FPS. This is the actual amount of frames that you're seeing while you're playing your game. And while the right file FPS, this next checkbox, is the amount of frames that the program is actually recording your video at so you can see how many frames you're playing at versus how many frames the programs recording at and you can see if there's a problem going on you can kinda of tell if you need to change some settings around the record status just shows simply that it's recording or not using the um, showing the amount of frames that you have and for me I like to leave that checked and I use my green as showing that I'm not recording and my red that shows I am recording Last to note, you can change the location of the recording or of the number of frames you're seeing uh, anywhere around the screen down below by clicking or in the center to disable it. The movie capture frame and screenshot frames, basically it just outlines the screen that it's um, hooked to, that it's targeting, to show you exactly what is being recorded, the frame that's actually been recorded and uh, this number does that not actually show up in your recording just a note the folders tab up next this folders tab again the default settings the first thing you want to do is add a folder for me I've chosen my folder as Rust Gaming videos recorded so you can navigate to wherever you want create a folder save it and uh, choose that as your path to record your videos to the first thing you want to do is benchmark it by clicking this little icon over here and you want to leave this path alone right size is, or the right size is fine click run and it will give you an idea of how fast your hard drive is able to write roughly I'll have to check and I'll leave annotations I believe a hundred megabytes a second is the minimum that you want to record 1080 and 75 megabytes a second is the minimum you want to record 720 uh, lastly on this page don't forget to set a screenshots folder if you want to take screenshots with DxToy otherwise later on if you try to take a screenshot with it it just won't take it so I have mine just set to pictures DxToy screenshots next up the hotkeys tab uh, the first one that I have set is start stop movie capture I've set to my home key simply because it's out of the way but it's still easily accessible next is push to talk this button will come in useful uh, later on in the audios tab right here if you use push to talk in your voice programs or only want your voice to show up at certain times. I don't use it because I use voice activation in TeamSpeak and I don't have a problem with it. 
execute single screenshots. This is the button that replies to the page or applies to the page below taking screenshots. I have mine set to F11 because it's again out of the way. I don't use it a whole lot, but it's still easily accessible. If you want to set the rest of these, go for it. I don't use them, so I don't bother uh, putting them to any key. The movies tab up next. This is the one that can get a little confusing, and I will try to go over all this the best that I can. To start, I use the Largrith Lossless Codec. This does not come with DxTory originally, but the DxTory codec is perfectly fine. I just feel it records a little bit too high of a file size. So I use Largrith Lossless because it records just the same quality but a little bit lower file size. Uh, I will show you the page for the codec if you want to choose this one or get it. Um, you can download it here, simply install it, restart DxTory, and it will show up. The advanced, uh, or the kind of the options tab for this codec can be found by clicking this icon right to the side of it. And these settings are kind of for advanced use or for debugging. Um, use multi-threading is one that can be useful. If you have a single processor, you should not check this because it basically, this uses, this will tell the program to use multiple cores. The mode is the other important one that you want to uh, look into. And essentially what this is, is the quality that this codec records at. So RGBA is the highest quality that it can record at, whereas YV12 is the lowest quality. I record at YUY2 because I find that it's a good quality without losing any um, pixels or getting any kind of distortion. And it's still a decent file size. So that's the options that I use there. These settings down below are set in stone by the codec itself and cannot be changed, but in the DxTory codec you can. All right, and as far as using clipping, I've never had a use for it, but if for some reason your program's in widescreen or you just want to get rid of a certain section of your screen, you can use this to kind of clip and crop uh, that certain part of the screen away. And frame rate, the frame rate some people use 30 FPS, some people use 29.97. If you're going to be uploading to YouTube, there's really no reason to go above 30. And I guess technically YouTube changes your video to 29.97, but I use 30 um, just out of habit, and I feel it's an even number. And to be honest, 29.97 drives my OCD nuts. File output. If you leave, if uh, this box is unchecked, DxTory is going to give you a strange uh, file, and I don't really know what to do with it. So just leave file output checked. Direct show output you want to leave unchecked, and then file format. This is another important option. For AVI, this is this will while you're recording, automatically create an AVI file for you. One single file for each recording you hit, toggling the record key, it'll create an AVI file versus raw capture well again it's just going to create one cat or one uh, file per recording that you take but it records it in this raw form and you will later on have to go and um, use the converter to change it to an AVI file this is useful only really for computers that are maybe a little stressed with converting it and encoding it and everything right away to an AVI while you're playing um, it's a little less stressful. So I leave mine at AVI because my computer is able to handle it. Mouse cursor, if you want to include your cursor, synchronized video FPS, I leave both of these off. Scaling is what is important if, say, you want to play your game at 1920 by 1080, but maybe you only want to record it at 720p. Um, you can either do that by percentages, which I find awfully strange and don't use, or you can scale it down by actual pixels right here and enter the um, size you want below. So for example, 1280 by 720 will give you a 720p video while still playing in uh, 1080. So that covers the videos tab, or the recordings tab. If you have questions, leave them below and I'll try to uh, answer them. But now we'll jump over to audio. In the audios tab, uh, again default settings, you can choose up to eight different audio streams. I don't really find a need for much more than two. And the two options that I use are my microphone and my speakers. When I added those extra tabs, it reset this. 
So my speakers, I use PCM, and my audio, or my microphone, I use PCM. And I set my audio to the highest quality possible, simply because I don't feel it makes a difference. I'd rather have it be at a higher quality than a lower quality. Make sure that the recorded sounds button is checked, otherwise it won't record that single, uh, that uh, audio source. You can leave it checked and unchecked for each audio source as well as the use push to talk hotkey. Like talked about in the hotkeys section, you can set this button and it will only record that source if you push that hotkey. Jumping over to the screenshots tab, this is to take quick rapid screenshots in game if you so want to. Um, I've never found a use for it or need to use it. Clippings, this is again if you just want to clip out a certain small section of the screen for whatever reason. Um, File format, I save all my screenshots using DxTory to a PNG at 97 quality. I don't include the mouse cursor. And again, scaling. If you want to scale the screenshot down in size, you can do it by percentage or by size, 1280 by 720, for example. The next tab is advanced. And a lot of this stuff you won't use unless you're trying to debug or having some problems. The couple of things that are useful that I will try to go over briefly that might apply to you is enable multi-GPU fix code. And this is if you have a, a um, graphics card with more than one GPU in it. This is supposed to help DxTory, I guess, be able to detect that better and uh, utilize it more efficiently. So if you have that problem and you're noticing some issues with your graphics card in DxTory, you can try checking this box. Uh, for CPU processing. This is for while the program's recording, it's going to take a little bit, it'll take some load off of the graphics card or the GPU, and it'll force it to use the CPU a little bit more if your CPU isn't being used as much. So if you're noticing that problem, you can try using that checkbox. The other one I feel is useful is processing threads. This is the number of threads, or the number of CPU, the number of cores, excuse me, that are used while DxTory is running to perform all of its actions. Um, so I give it two because I have eight cores and I feel if it ever needs it, it can use that extra core without any problems. Um, so if you have a problem, you can try using that to increase the amount of um, cores that DxTory can use. Uh, this globals tab, disable the print screen snapshot. Um, if you don't want to have your snap print screen button working while DxTory is open, I believe that's what this does. Check for updates. Check if there's any updates for DxTory. Show the task, task tray icon down below in the bottom right here. And it also will hide the actual icon as seen here when I minimize it. This is the registration page. Not all that useful. And um, so that'll cover DxTory. If you have any questions, leave them below and I will try my best to answer them. Now we will jump into Vegas Movie Studio HD 11. All right. Now, really quick, to give you an idea of the settings that I use and the file sizes that I get, um, as you can see in Vegas and in this um, Explorer tab, for 2 minutes and 9 seconds, I have a file size of 5.81 gigs. Or for 16 minutes and 37 seconds, I have a file size of 30, 43 gigs gigs and 34 minutes I have 93 gigs so roughly with my settings at 1080p I get about 2 to 3 gigs a minute is what my videos record at so it will very quickly fill up your hard drive um, and before we jump into this you can get Movie Studio 11 <clears throat> uh, from the actual Sony website or Amazon.com for cheaper I got mine for about $15 so there is the program that I use. <clears throat> and we will just throw a quick little clip in. All you have to do is navigate to where your videos are saved in this list down below, or to the left. Find it, drag it into the videos tab, or any video track. I'm going to delete these extra ones so that it fits on the screen better. And what it, uh, as you can see down below, it's creating the audio channels. So it's building those up, so we're going to wait for that to finish. But a couple of things that you want to do um, to get the best quality that you can when you render it out 
is you can right click your audio or your video channel excuse me right click your video channel go to properties uncheck maintain aspect ratio and uncheck disable resample this will give your video the best possible quality when you render out because it's not going to try to dummy down or tone down the quality when you uh, decide to render it out so now that you've done that uh, play it over and make sure that everything fits or everything is how you want it you can crop in Sony Vegas simply by clicking S by default and it'll clip uh, clip out a section so say I only want this maybe little 20 second clip right here and drag it to the end of the timeline right there uh, you can zoom in with it I scroll with my mouse wheel and let's say I got a really cool shot so I'm going to save this right here by going to project render as and I need to choose a path where I want to save it so I'm just gonna save it to my videos rendered folder and I'm gonna name it test one we'll say and as far as the option that I use to render it I go to Sony AVC slash MVC I expand this option scroll towards the bottom and you will find internet 1920 by 1080 30p or you can also find 1280 by 720 30p this will take that resolution and uh, make it down to as you can see down here 29.970 FPS like we saw in DX story is an option for the number of frames that you capture so I use this one and uh, it records it or it renders out at 16 megabits a second which comes out at very clear quality and I'll click render and it should start rendering that clip out as you can see you, the amount of time that it'll take you to render out this video uh, will vary but that is basically the overview about how you record how I record the program I use in settings and the program I use to render out and edit a brief overview I hope that helps some of you at least get an idea like I said if you have questions about either DX Tory or Sony Movie Studio I'll try my best to answer them uh, otherwise I hope this helped and I will see you guys later bye lastly this is how the clip came out How did I just hit the two fucking people out, but I didn't hit the chopper? That was like a one hell of a shot. Holy shit. I'll finish it off.